Chapter 1 I never thought it would happen to me. Kate Miller looked down at the picture art therapist Izzy Riley had asked her to draw. Izzy's instructions had been simple. Just draw what you feel. Kate hadn't known where to begin, and then in a mindless blur, all the hurt, all the pain, all the grief flew from her fingers in frenzied crayon scrawls. Her fingers clenched the hard black crayon as she glanced down at her scribbles. There, on the page, in an incoherent blur, were all those memories Kate thought she had talked through until she was bruised and blue. All those toxic thoughts that she thought she had healed. All those terrifying traumas she thought she had pushed so far to the back of her mind had exploded through. Kate rubbed her hand below her abdomen, feeling the puckered ridge of the scars and skin grafts she covered up and hid from the rest of the world. Physical scars she hid from view, not unlike the way she tried to hide her mental scars. It had been a year since the fatal day that had detonated her happiness. For nearly twelve months, she had plastered on a brave face of self-reliance. But now, it was a week before Christmas, and everything had erupted to the surface. She was so terrified of the consequences, she reached out for help. Kate studied the black sooty image, forged with thick crayon blazes of black and frenzied scribbles of grey, and grimaced. She lifted her hand to the thick fringe of flame-coloured hair and pressed it down against her forehead, feeling as she did so the indentations and scars caused by flying volcanic rock. I don't know if this is a good idea. Kate's voice was thick with conviction and intensity. Her mood had changed since entering the therapist's room. She was at once furtively angry and coolly clear in her certainty that mining her emotions was a big mistake. Use a new page if you like, Izzy said. Her tone was so compassionate and kind and Kate instantly trusted her. Kate had worked with a great number of therapists since the accident, and not one of them seemed to truly care. She liked that Izzy was creative and unconventional. She sensed she was a nonconformist, an outsider, just like Kate. Feel free to edit, Izzy handed Kate a pair of scissors. Cut out anything that you don't like, anything that you don't want. Anything you want to change, Izzy said. She changed her words as though being careful not to leave Kate too much or direct where Kate's subconscious wanted to go. Kate looked at the pad of paper balanced on a board on her knees and tore off a sheet of paper. She grabbed the glue stick as he handed her and pasted it over her memories, then slapped the fresh page down. How do you feel? as he asked. Blank. That's what Kate felt. Blank and empty and nothing, she affirmed silently as her gaze sunk into the white void, a void just like the gaping hole in her life where her family used to be. Better, Kate lied. She clenched her fist and forced it to the page and rubbed it back and forth in vigorous sweeps over the paper. She knew she should confide in the therapist, but the truth was she didn't want to lift the lid off the emotions she strove so hard to suppress. She didn't want to tell Izzy, I feel nothing, and that's how I want it. She feared just like the volcano on White Island that had erupted that awful day. Once her feelings exploded to the surface, they would prove fatal. She raked her hands through her hair. God, she was just hanging on as it was. Every semblance of her life that she had scraped together hung by a tiny worn thread. Every tiny little morsel of the reason why she kept on living was reduced to stale crumbs. Every tear she stuffed down threatened to hurl itself onto the page, and she was terrified that once she lifted the lid on her guilt that consumed her every waking moment, it would explode, because all she wanted to do was die. Kate glanced at the clock on the therapist's wall. Three minutes to three. Three, her lucky number, or rather, it had been. Three minutes more until her session would be over. Thank God. 
She was stupid to think that this would change anything, but she wanted to try. Didn't she owe it to Zack? Didn't she owe it to her bees? Didn't she owe it to... She gulped hard, suddenly feeling she couldn't breathe. Didn't she owe it to her dad? She was sick of living like this, unable to feel, dead from the heart down, permanently scarred and terrified of the dark thoughts that permeated her mind, like the sulfurous gas and toxic fumes that killed so many people that hateful day. She clenched her eyes as the video footage of the burns many victims suffered replayed in her mind. No, she affirmed, pushing the truth away. Her parents had died from the fumes, she silently affirmed, not wanting to think the worse. It's okay to cry, Kate, Izzy said, handing her a tissue. You can't always be stoic. Tears tell truths. Tears are healing. Kate shook her head. She didn't want to accept the truth, and she didn't deserve to heal. I'm fine, she said. I am a rock. Why did you come here, Kate? Izzy gently probed. Kate shrugged. I thought coming back to New Zealand would be therapeutic. You know, sort of like face the fear and... She bit her lip. That was the problem. She had faced the fear. It had been her idea. Her whole family, at Kate's insistence, had faced the fear of the awakening volcano and look where it had got them. Dead. Izzy looked at her sympathetically. I mean, hear, hear, she said, sweeping her hands around the counselling room. Kate turned away. She shouldn't have come. She didn't want sympathy. She didn't want kindness. And she most definitely didn't want people worrying about her. She had a hard enough job worrying about herself. And now she was worrying about being a failure counselling client. Izzy deserved a more pliant client. There you go again, she cursed under her breath, getting stuck in your old paradigm of worrying for everyone else, and then the truth splintered through her mind. The fact was, if she'd done a better job worrying about everyone else, she wouldn't have nagged her family to go on the volcanic excursion. She blamed herself, and no amount of therapy was ever going to change the facts. Christmas last year, her mum, dad and sister, her whole family died and she had killed them. And on that day, she swore she would never care or love anyone again. Izzy glanced at the clock. I'm sorry, Kate, but I have another client. Are you okay if we leave things there for today? Kate nodded. Sure, same time next week. Yes, same time next week is perfect, she lied. She wouldn't be coming back, ever, without her family. What was the point in living?